Anyway, tonight on Pod of Punisher, we're going to talk about real unemployment and uh, also weed news. So let's get into it when the silliness ends and politics comes to the Stoner Jesus Show. Our nation stands on the brink. Every day brings new federal encroachments that take our freedoms and strangle our will. There comes a time when the silliness must take a back seat to the serious issues of the day. The time is now. It's time to fight back and reclaim the freedom that is rightfully ours. It is time to discuss the serious issues of the day with Stoner Jesus' Pothead Punditry. Indeed, Podhead Punitry on the Stoner Jesus Show, podcast number 111. This is Podhead Punitry, episode 24. Thanks to everybody who's listening live and on podcast. And those of you listening on YouTube, because we put our political segments up on YouTube, the Podhead Punitry segments, they're all up there. The first 23 and number 24 will be up there soon, which we're doing live tonight, is our political segment. And if you're, if you're on YouTube... And you're listening, share to the other to your social networks and other people on YouTube these political segments. Spread the word about freedom and liberty and marijuana legalization with Pothead Punitry on the Stoner Jesus Show and stonerjesus.net. First of all, I want to talk about the uh, unemployment. Now, uh, looks like the general election, barring a third party run by uh, Ron Paul, is going to be Mitt Romney against Barack Obama, the current president. Now, uh, the thing is, as I said before, they're owned by the same people. Goldman Sachs is the number one contributor for both men, the worldwide banking conglomerate, Goldman Sachs. But the uh, the point is that Obama can't win unless unemployment's going down. and They can't get unemployment going, going to go down unless they cook the numbers You've seen the recent news. Everybody's fallen over themselves on the, in the mainstream media to talk about how unemployment has fallen to 8.3%. It's only fallen to 8.3% because of the way they calculate unemployment is now different than it used to be. Case in point, this, uh, this uh, is from ZeroHedge.com, this column. The basic point of the column, and, and I'll read it here in a second, is uh, I'll read part of it at least, is that there was 243,000 jobs created according to the government numbers. But a record 1.2 million people left the labor force. Unemployment accounts for those look, actively looking for work. So 1.2 million people left the workforce. So an unemployment number uh, wise, you add that to the jobs numbers, and that's a, a net of almost a million and a half jobs. But there's not a million and a half jobs. 1.2 million people left the workforce, meaning they're no longer counted in the unemployment numbers. The article on ZeroHedge.com says, A month ago we joked when we said that for Obama to get an unemployment rate to negative by election time, all he had to do was crush the labor force partition, participation rate to about 55%. Looks like the good folks at the BLS hurt us. It appears that the people not in the labor force exploded by an unprecedented record 1.2 million. No, that's not a typo. 1.2 million people dropped out of the labor force in one month. So as the labor force increased from 153.9 million to 154.4 million, the non-institutional population increased by 242.3 million, meaning those not in the labor force surged from 86.7 million to 87.9 million, which means that the civilian labor force tumbled to a fresh 30-year low of 63.7, as the BLS is seriously planning on eliminating nearly half the available labor pool from the unemployment calculation. As for quality of jobs, 
as withholding tax rolls over year over year, it can only mean that the U.S. is replacing high-paying fire jobs with low-paying construction and manufacturing. Fire being, I guess, an acronym, F-I-R-E. So much for the improvement. And the, uh, the column of ZeroHedge.com has um, a lot about the, uh, the labor force particip- participation rate, which was at its highest around 96, 98, 2000, uh, in the 2002. And then it dropped to 04, and then in 06 it came back up. But it has dropped very much since 2009 from around 66% to now the 63.7%, which is also hit on in uh, another story that I have right here uh, from uh, CNS News. Despite a January jobs report that saw a slightly stronger private sector job growth than in recent months, long-term unemployment remains at record high levels, and revised statistics show that another 1.2 million have left the labor force. According to the aforementioned BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of long-term unemployed, those out of work for 26, seven weeks or more, was unchanged at 5.5 million in January, near its record of 6.7 million in April 2010. That number has been at historic highs of 5 to 6 million since August 2009. BLS figures also reveal that the number of people who have left the labor force entirely was much higher than previously thought, 1.2 million higher. See, the, the numbers don't mean shit. Uh, this is a, a column from Seeking Alpha. There it is, yes. <laughs> it's finally coming up. SeekingAlpha.com. Why U.S. unemployment rate is actually 12.1%. This is where we get into how they used to calculate unemployment even as early as uh, a few years ago. The article says there are plenty of ways to look at the unemployment numbers and U3 is the official unemployment rate. The U6 measurement is often mentioned to highlight the precarious condition of the job market in the American in the broader sense according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics BLS. The official rate is 8.5 percent while the U6 stands at 15.5 percent. The definition for U6 is as follows. Total unemployed plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force, plus total employed part-time for economic reasons as a percent of the civilian labor force, plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force. I must acknowledge that the BLS has made modifications to its methods over the years, but I use their numbers as published. It says this exercise is not about U6, which is no higher, was also higher than reported, but rather the participation rate that is often mentioned in passing. While new jobs and the official unemployment rate grab the headlines, as will be the case on Friday, the labor force ratio to civilian population participation rate highlights the economic weakness, sheds light on why this recovery is not materializing and why we're in for a long struggle. Uh, And then it goes into um, uh, the, the labor force kept up with the population growth until 2007, and then the growth rates diverged. And there is a, uh, there's a graph on SeekingAlpha.com on this article. The lack of jobs forced the participation rate reduction, whose magnitude has not been observed over the last 20 years. Despite the recent improvement, we have a clear indication that a typical economic turnaround is not in the cards. The spikes in the employed growth rate are the result of the participation rate being higher than average. And it goes into, uh, based on the data published by the BLS, participation rate between 1990 and 2011 was 66.26%, the same average for pre-crisis period of 1990 to 2006 was 66.5%. And the official participation rate at the end of 2011 was much lower, as we mentioned before, at under 64%. And although the difference appears small, it delivers some sobering results. With um, using, If you use the, the old criteria, with the participation rate of 66.5% as it was before 2006, the real unemployment rate that we have right now, and this accounts for the people who have dropped out of the workforce, is actually 12.1% and not 8.3%. 
The average unemployment rate for the uh, 1990 to 2011 period was 6%. And assuming that population will continue to grow roughly 1% per year while using a rounded participation rate of 66%, we need 130,000 new jobs every month just to keep up with population growth. But there's already a current shortage of 8.5 million jobs using the same 6% average. And to close the gap, we need another 360,000 jobs every month, nonstop for the next three years, or close to 500,000 jobs monthly to return to the norm. The point is, as I said before, they have to use different numbers to cook the books, as they say, to try to tell you that unemployment is 8.3%, when really... If you use the numbers they used just five years ago or six years ago, it's actually 12.1% because that accounts for the people who have left left the workforce. But they don't. Uh, the mainstream media won't say that. That's why you listen to the Standard Jesus Show and you listen to Potted Punditry and you share this on YouTube and on your social networks to everyone. We're going to come back with Weed News on Pothead Punitry, episode 24, right after this. Indeed. There's a Majizus Spy, the song Legalize Freedom. You can find Majizus Spy on Twitter, M-A-J-I-Z-A-S-P-Y. Pothead Punitry, podcast number 24, or episode number 24 on the Stern Jesus Show. Continue with our political segment Right now we're talking weed news. We get our weed news exclusively from the 420times.com. New poll out of California shows 62% support the Regulate Marijuana Like Wine ballot initiative. It is currently trying to get signatures out in California. 62% in a new poll of 800 likely California voters say they favor regulating marijuana like wine versus 35% against it. 80% of respondents say they agree with a statement Quote, state and federal drug laws are outdated and have failed. Therefore, we need to take a new approach that makes sense for today. So 80%. 71% of respondents say they feel authorities waste too much time and money enforcing marijuana laws. When it comes to a definite yes vote versus a definite no vote, the numbers, according to the article, still hold up 41% to 28%. So that's what's going on out in California. Of course, the Fast and Furious scandal is uh, threatening Eric Holder and top, of ju- top uh, Justice Department officials at uh, in the Obama administration in Washington, D.C. Last week, the parents of Brian Terry, a border agent who was killed in 2010 with guns that were supplied to the Mexican cartels by the U.S. government themselves, filed a $25 million wrongful death lawsuit in Arizona. There's also hearings going on in Congress where uh, Eric Holder... Has been there's a video of this on the 420times.com in the uh, the story entitled "Fast and Furious Scandal Threatens Top of Officials in the Obama Administration." Eric Holder testifying about uh, basically what uh, Fast and Furious is for those of you who don't know is um, uh, and the official word from the government is that a couple of people figured that it'd be a good idea, or however many people it takes to do this, figured it'd be a good idea to ship guns into Mexico and track them and trace them somehow to the Mexican cartels to learn uh, something about them. But, of course, they lost a lot of the guns. And one of those guns, at least, was used to kill the border agent in 2010, Brian Terry, whose parents are suing in Arizona court. Um, but, uh, I don't know, a more likely scenario is probably that uh, the drug cartels have bribed a certain percentage of people on the, uh, along the border and even in the Justice Department. The There's a FBI report, according to the FBI report, the Mexican cartels are active in over a thousand United States cities. And they got money. They can buy people at the Justice Department to get uh, whatever they want. Maybe some nice guns. Maybe a, a blind eye when they bring in coke and heroin and shit like that across the border from Mexico. There's a huge bust in California over a million marijuana plants seized. There's also, of course, the uh, the Bronx bust of um, 
the marijuana, the five-story marijuana factory. All this can be found at the 420times.com. Uh, there's also a link to the petition to pardon Mark Emery. There's a story about that. Uh, Mark Emery currently sits in U.S. federal prison for the supposed crime of selling seeds on the Internet, but he dared to speak out against the DEA and U.S. marijuana policy. And that is why he's in prison. The marijuana factory bust in the Bronx was a five-story brewery operation. Uh, about 600 plants, some of which were almost seven feet tall. Those who ran it allegedly produced millions of dollars of cannabis every year. And, of course, neighbors said they, they observed suspicious activity in and around the building, like nighttime deliveries and also a strong odor of marijuana. There's also other things on the other 420times.com right now. A recent study of cancer patients who treated pain associated with their illness showed nearly two-thirds of those studied were satisfied with the effects of medical cannabis. Uh, there's also a great video from a, a Joe Rogan podcast. In the War on Drugs, 40-plus years of programming, they talk about um, marijuana activism and how it ties into freedom. Uh, also, 42 Washington state legislators have asked the DEA to reclassify marijuana and to reschedule it. Uh, that uh, is highly unlikely, but they have joined with a lot of governors in asking for the same thing. So we'll see what happens. You know, you're not uh, not all that hopeful. But it would be nice if they did reschedule marijuana and at least admit that it has medical value. Maybe take a lot of pressure off the states. Who knows? We can only hope. That was Pothead Punishment Episode 24. Like I said, go share it.